Hello everyone, welcome to the latest episode of Youth Fires. It's Fast Jesse here and today I'm bringing you such a special episode, such a unique episode because we're talking about Jesus and we're talking about Passover. And why Jesus at Passover? Now this is significant because we can't think of Jesus without thinking of the purpose of Passover. We can't think about Passover, about going ahead in time and thinking about Jesus, who is the ultimate sacrifice by God upon the earth. Now, this is significant because we have to understand that in the Old Testament, when Passover first came, and for those of you who know that Passover is the Jewish feast uh, that they celebrate Uh, coming out of Egypt when God gave Moses a decree of the last plague that uh, came against the Egyptians and Pharaoh, which uh, moved Pharaoh to get rid of the Jews from Egypt. Now, what is the significance of this? Now, we're going to try to understand here for you today in this short time, why And what is the correlation between Passover of the Old Testament and Jesus of the New Testament? So we're reading and we are in the book of Exodus and we're reading Exodus 12. And we're just going to get a gist of it because what happened uh, prior to that, we know they had the the many other plagues that took place and um, Pharaoh was uh, really hardened. and, And even just before in chapter 11, God said that he hardened Pharaoh's heart. Right, because he really wanted uh, it to be a situation where the children of Israel, he just wanted to get rid of them desperately. And we need to understand here, people, that Egypt, uh, in this case, for us now, is a spiritual battle, and that we, it means coming out of the old man and coming out of the old ways. So, right, so in Levon, God hardened. Uh, Pharaoh's heart and now we see that in verse uh, chapter 12 that God gave Moses the decree of what and the final plague that was going to take place so we're just going to just read a little bit of 12 okay so from the beginning of 12 it says now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt saying this month shall be the beginning of months it shall be the first month of the year to you. So God is making this decree that now this is the beginning for the children of Israel moving forward. This is it. This is the start. This is the beginning. And then how were they going to be as a people, as one, not enslaved? Now, we must take that into consideration in our lives. Giving our lives to Jesus, we have to understand that because now, we know that our old man was gone and the new man came to came to life we are now reborn in the kingdom of god and that is something to rejoice about so god was laying the foundation there for the children of israel uh, to moses so it goes on to say speak to all the congregation of israel saying on the 10th of the month every man shall take for himself a lamb according to the house of his father a lamb for a household remember remember and those who are already ahead of me will understand that we know that jesus is the, is the lamb he is and will always be that ultimate sacrifice that was made for our lives So if we go down a bit, it says, Your lamb shall be without blemish, a meal of the first year. Wow. Without blemish, without spot. You may take take it from sheep or from the goats. Now you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month. Then the whole assembly congregation of Israel shall kill it at twilight. So there was a significance of doing something uh, from dusk or doing something at dawn. And they shall take, here says, they shall take of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses where they eat. Now this is significant, the blood, the sacrifice of the blood. We know in the New Testament, Jesus, his blood had to be sacrificed for the remission of our sins. 
So there we see the correlation and it being placed on the lintels of the door, I mean, uh, it being placed on uh, the, the outside of our hearts so that the entrance of our hearts will be pure. Amen. Hallelujah. That is so amazing. So we're going down and we're reading from verse 12. For, no, okay, sorry. From, we're reading from verse 11 because here's the significance here. And thus you shall eat it, right? Uh, with a belt on your waist, sandals on your feet, and staff in your hand. Now the significance of that is being prepared in season and out of the season, getting ready. So we have to understand that when God speaks and when God says, be prepared, be prepared, that means he's about to do something. And it's all about us being obedient as his sons and his daughters. So he's telling Jerusalem of Israel, be prepared. Even though you're in your house, you're preparing a meal. You are being prepared to get ready to go. Right? And so it goes on to say, you shall eat in haste. It shall, it says, the Lord's Passover. It is the Lord's Passover. Amen. Hallelujah. And we'll come back to that. Right. So it goes on to say, For I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land, both male and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt. I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Now the blood shall be the sign for you, uh, be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. The blood of Jesus. Once the blood of Jesus covers us, nothing, no harm can come to us. For those of you in Christ Jesus, once the blood is covered, the blood of Jesus covers. The blood of Jesus covers. Now, guys, we're not talking about natural blood. It's spiritual things we're talking about here, okay? And what we must understand is that the reason that God did this and He struck the first generation, uh, that next generation of Egypt means striking away the old things, striking away the old man, but it also means uh, striking away uh, things that may want to come and affect us later on. Okay? Getting rid of a whole generation, and we're thinking spiritually here, getting rid of those spirits that will affect us in the future. Okay, that is significant. When we give our lives to Jesus, it's getting rid of everything that was in our past. We can't hold on to anything again. Okay? Right, so this is so significant. So it goes on to say in 14, So this day shall be your, to you a memorial, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord. Wow. Throughout your generations. You shall keep it as a feast by everlasting ordinance. Amen. Hallelujah. By everlasting ordinance. This is significant. So then Moses went uh, to the elders and he told you, and here's, here's a, another part, a portion of significance of why they must keep it. Because they asked why. So it says in uh, verse 20. Five here, it will come to pass when you come to the land which the Lord gave you. This is the land of Canaan flowing with milk and honey. Just as he promised that you keep this service. Keep this what? Service. And it shall be where your children say to you, what do you mean by this service? That you shall say it is the Passover sacrifice, my God. It is the Passover sacrifice of the Lord who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt when he struck the Egyptians and delivered the households. My God. So the people bowed their hearts and worshipped. Then the children of Israel went away and did so as the Lord commanded Moses and Aaron. So they did. You obey God's word. You obey his commandments and your generations will be blessed. Your generations will continue to serve the Lord. That is a promise. And then how do we relate this and correlate this to Jesus and the significance of Jesus being sacrificed at a certain point in time? So if we read John, we're going to John. And John 13, it says, Now before the feast of Passover, wow, when Jesus knew this, his hour had come that he should depart from the world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them till the end. My God, and we know 
when we are in Christ, there's no end, there's everlasting life. So Jesus loves us till after, after, after everything. God loves us till after. We must understand the significance that God sent his only son. We're speaking about firstborn in the Old Testament in Exodus. We see again, Jesus, God's first and only born son, he sent as that sacrificial lamb for us, for our sins. And Jesus understood, yes, he was all all God, but he was also all man. So it, it was a lot. It was a lot. It was a lot that he is still willing to go and die on that cross. And he knew all along. He knew when was the, the time that he that it needed to be done. And even through all this, he showed the perfect example of service. And we must understand that, that, that in this time of Passover and in this time of understanding that Jesus sacrificed himself and he rose again that we understand the significance that jesus led a life of service to others right so if we go down in in john 13 and we read from verse 7 we just see that example of service before we close off jesus answered and said to them why am i why what sorry what am i doing you do not understand now but you will understand after this so we saw that a lot with the disciples actually that god jesus was doing things and they had no idea they had no understanding but they got there eventually which thank god for that so peter said to them you shall never wash my feet so jesus was washing his feet right being the perfect example for us of being in service jesus so jesus answered him if i do not wash you you have no part with me wow that is amazing so jesus is saying if i don't wash you with my blood then you cannot be in service to me the washing of the blood means the cleansing of all sin cleansing of all impurities so that we could be that perfect pure living vessel for god that's why in the old testament you see it had to be a perfect lamb without spot and without blemish right so it goes on to say simon peter said to him lord not my feet only but also my hands and my head you could understand peter there a little bit you know but jesus said to him he who is bathed needs only to wash his feet but is completely clean and you are clean but not all of you wow for he knew who would betray him therefore he said you are not all clean so we know that satan was trying to get one over on god which is that's not possible right trying to sacrifice or trying to crucify jesus just as like Satan was like, ah, you see what God did in the Old Testament with the Egyptians and he killed the firstborn. I'm going to get him back. But <laughs> little did he know that that would be a total mistake on his part. That what he did actually saved the world. <laughs> Which is crazy. <laughs> Praise God for that, right? So I just want to close with just this, this portion of scripture here. A little earlier in John uh, 12 because it's just it just gives the example and, and Jesus we see Jesus in all his brilliance and his wonder here as we understand the significance of Jesus at Passover Passover as well as Jesus being sacrificed on the cross okay so it says then Jesus cried out to him he who believes in me believes not in me but in him who sent me and he who sees me sees him who sent me i have come as a light in the world that whoever believes in me should not abide in darkness and if anyone hears my words and does not believe i do not judge him for i did not come to judge the world but to save the world he who rejects me does not receive my words 
has that which judges him. The word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. For I have not spoken on my own authority, but the Father who sent me gave me a command, what I should say and what I should speak. And I know this, I know that his command is everlasting life. And I know that his command is everlasting life. Hope we're receiving this. Therefore, what I speak, just as the Father has told me, so I speak. And we saw that in the Old Testament where Moses said the same thing. Now, what he speak is what God has spoken. And I hope today that you receive the word understanding that Jesus is the ultimate Passover sacrifice. Jesus is the ultimate sacrifice. But and guess what? Guess what? He's still alive today. He's still saving today. He's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. And he sent the Holy Spirit to be our comfort. He sent the Holy Spirit to be our guide. He sent the Holy Spirit to be that plumb line and that voice inside of us uh, that will keep us on the straight path. And I hope we understand that today as you receive this word in this time. And I hope you enjoy uh, this season and enjoy this time. All right. So God bless you richly. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Click the notification bell for when more episodes are coming out. Uh, this is truly a blessing to bring this word to you in this season. All right. God bless you. Bye.